All right, so let's pick off where we left off yesterday. Remember, if you, if you remember, we are talking about bikini, uh, bikini uh, zucchini, and banana bread. And we got up to part D. So on part D, uh, the problem says that she can sell zucchini bread for $4. All right, so let's write that down. Zucchini bread... Uh, for four dollars and banana bread for three dollars okay what's the greatest amount of money Haley can collect by selling the bread made with 22 cups of sugar all right so 22 cups of sugar and four sticks of butter All right, uh, so we said in part C, uh, part C, we have uh, 22 cups of sugar and four sticks of butter. We said that the answer choice was D, right? So we know that um, she can make four loaves of zucchini bread. And for banana bread, we know that we could make six. We explained where that came from yesterday. Uh, and that was using the 22 cups of sugar. We said that the banana bread takes two cups. Zucchini bread takes one and a half. And that has to be less than or equal to 22. And then for the butter, we know that we're using a quarter of a stick for banana bread and half a stick for zucchini bread. So that was where our inequalities came from and we plugged in our numbers until we got one that worked for both. That's what a system of inequalities lo looks like. So now that we know that we have four loaves of zucchini bread and six loaves of banana bread, well, if we could sell zucchini bread for four lo four dollars a loaf, that's four dollars for one, right? So what would we do for two? Well, if we had two loaves, we'd multiply by two. If we had three, we'd multiply by three. If we could do four, we multiply by four, and we get $16 for zucchini bread. Uh, for banana bread, we could sell for $3 a loaf, and we have six loaves. So one loaf would be three, two would be times two, three would be times three, four would be times four, we have six loaves, so we're going to do $3 per loaf times six. That's $18. So it's asking you, uh, what is the greatest amount of money Haley can collect by selling the bread with 22 cups of sugar and four sticks of butter? The answer would be 18 plus 16, which is $34. And that concludes uh, problem one. Let's move on to problem number two. All right. So let's see what this one has to say here. I'll go on to, uh, I'll stay here. I'll figure it out later. All right. So for problem number two, uh, it's saying, let's see, problem two. Members of a high school sports team are selling boxes of popcorn and boxes of pretzels for a fundraiser. They earn $2 for each popcorn box and $5 for each pretzel box. Members want to earn at least $500 from all of their sales. Let X represent the number of boxes of popcorn sold and let Y represent the number of boxes of pretzels sold. All right, fair enough. So part A, let's just write all this down here. So it's saying that X is going to be uh, represent the boxes of popcorn. So let's just document that. And it's saying that Y is going to represent the boxes of pretzels.
Okay. And we want to make um, at least $500. So remember, you're always trying to look at the total. The last number is always like total. All right. So total, we're trying to make $500. All right. The amount of money that we make has to be bigger than that number, greater than or equal to. That's what it says. We want to earn at least $500. Uh, so that's kind of how we set it up. And the way that we sell money is we sell boxes of popcorn and we sell boxes of pretzels. Now the total amount of money we make from popcorn plus the total amount of money we make from pretzels has to be more than $500. Well for popcorn it says that we could sell each popcorn um, for $2 and each box of pretzels we could sell for $5. So as far as uh, right an inequality to represent the number of boxes um, that need to be sold to reach the goal of earning $500. Uh, well, here it is right here. 2x plus 5y is greater than or equal to 500. It looks like that's answer choice A for part A. All right, let's move on for part B. Part B, it says a line exists that serves as the boundary for the points making up the solution set of the inequality representing the numbers of popcorn and boxes of pretzels. Consider the line graph in the xy plane. What would be the interpretation in context of its slope? All right, so it looks like we're trying to write this um, equation in slope-intercept form. That, that's, if they're asking us for slope, the easiest way to find the slope is to put it in slope-intercept form. So let's take 2x plus 5y, and we've done this before, greater than or equal to 500. We could bring the 2x on the other side. We get 5y is greater than or equal to negative 2x plus 500. Divide by 5. And we get y is greater than or equal to negative 2x over 5 plus 100. So our slope we'd be going down uh, 2 and then to the right 5. So let's see if we could come up with some kind of interpretation for this. Here's x, here's y. Uh, it looks like x we said represented uh, popcorn and y represented pretzels. And the y-intercept here would be 100. So we'll maybe go up by 10. It's 100. All right. And according to the slope, we're going to be going down 2 and over 5. So down 2 over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right here. And that's what our line would look like. So, let's see if we can come up with an explanation for this. So, as popcorn is going up, so as we're going to the right, 2, we are going, uh, let's see here, we're going down 2, for every five that we go to the right. So we're going down two for every um, five pretzels. Okay, for every five pretzels we sell, we have to sell two fewer um, for every five popcorn that we sell, let me see here, down two. So down two would be, uh, we go two fewer pretzels, and popcorn is increasing by five. All right, so this one's a little bit tricky. Remember, you always have plenty of time to do these kind of problems. Let's see which statement uh, 
pretty much matches what we said here. For every increase of two boxes of popcorn, no, that, that's not right. Um, we're increasing popcorn by five, right? So answer choice A and B can't possibly be right. Let's go to answer choice C. For every increase of five boxes of popcorn, that's true so far, two more boxes of pretzels. Well, we're going up by five for popcorn, but we're not going up two for pretzels, so that doesn't really make sense. It would make sense to say we're going up five for popcorn, so we have to go down two for pretzels. So we know that A doesn't make sense. We know that B doesn't make sense because they're using the wrong slope. C doesn't make sense because it's saying pretzels is going up. Let's take a look at option D. For every increase of five boxes of popcorn, so that looks good, uh, five popcorn going up, it says that two fewer boxes of pretzels uh, so two fewer boxes of pretzels is going on. So it looks like that's going to be the answer, D. That's really what we want. Uh, for if five pretzels are going up, two boxes of, uh, five boxes of, let's see, they both have P, so that's why it gets a little tricky. Um, but as five popcorn go up, two boxes of pretzels goes down. I'll use C for corn and P for pretzel. So it looks like option choice A said that um, two of popcorn go up and five pretzels go up. Well that's not what we have here. All right, what we have from our graph it looks like um, that five popcorn go up and two pretzels go down. So that's why option A wasn't true. Option B, it says two boxes of popcorn goes up and um, five pretzels go down. Well, that's not true. Uh, the one that makes the most sense is option D. We went up by five for popcorn. Popcorn goes up to five. And it looks like pretzels, the y-axis, went down too. Uh, so that would be option D. All right. Just look at the slope, right? The slope says that um, the top value is negative, right? Or you could even look at the graph. Popcorn's going up this way, so popcorn's going up by 5. The y value, we are going down 2. So pretzels is going down 2. Popcorn is going up 5. And the only answer that makes sense would be D. All right? Uh, let's see what else we have here. All right. Uh, so for part C, it's giving us a graph, or it's asking us to make a graph. Okay, and it says members of the team believe they could sell at least 40 boxes of pretzels. So let's take a look at this. So for part C, remember that X represent the boxes of popcorn, and Y represented uh, boxes of pretzels. For part C, it's saying that um, they could sell at least 40 boxes of pretzels. Okay, so pretzels, the number of pretzels, um, the boxes that we sell would be greater than or equal to 40. Um, which graph represents the solution in the XY coordinate plane of the system of inequalities that represents the number of boxes of popcorn and boxes of pretzels that could be sold with the constraint that at least 40 boxes of pretzels will be sold? Okay, so what that means is we already had our equation from the last one right here. Y is greater than or equal to negative 2 fifths X plus 100. We already drew that. We went up by 10 in the last graph. I'll draw it again. Uh, 
Uh, let's see. All right. Uh, and it looks like if um, we go to graph this, let's graph the one that we just did before, right? We're going to go down two and to the right five. Something like that. That's what this graph looks like. Now, whenever we have a greater than, we're going to shade above. Right? If it's in slope intercept form and we have an inequality where it's y is greater than, we shade above. I'll just maybe keep this line going a little bit. Usually we try to get it all the way through to the axis, so it looks something like that. And we're shading above. Now it's saying that the boxes of pretzels are greater than 40. So that was the inequality y is greater than or equal to 40. right here. Well, y equals anything is a horizontal line. Maybe I'll do this in a different color. And y is greater than, so we're shading above this line. So the question is asking us which graph would represent all of the answers. So when you're graphing inequalities, and we've talked about this before, the answer is going to be where all of the shading happens. So we're going to try to look for the graph. You see how this has red and blue here? We're going to try to look for the answer that has red and blue. Uh, so this would be the only area that works. You see how it kind of looks like an obtuse angle here? And we're shading above. So let's see which of the answer choices uh, have that. It looks like for part A, it's including this part. So A has this part, so that's not true. We're not going to use part A um, because both red and blue aren't there, just, just one is. Uh, for choice B, it looks like we want to use this area and this area. But you could see, you know, B only has this part right here only has blue, this only has red. So part B wouldn't be an answer either. We want red and blue, not just one or the other. All right, so I'm taking a look at answer choice C. Answer choice C, we're using uh, pretty much the whole graph. We're using like everything here, and we're using everything here. But look, this doesn't have blue here. There's no blue. And this, there's no red. So you can't include that. We just want to include all blue and all red. So answer choice C wouldn't be an option either. And you can take a look at answer choice D. Answer choice D does look like exactly what we graphed here. We have blue, we have red, we actually have both for answer choice D. Uh, so it looks like D would be the answer uh, for that one. All right. Uh, that's all the time we have right now. So uh, I'm going to finish this up tomorrow. All right. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.